Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by Passing Score, where you can get more help on your finance exams at PassingScoreFinance.com. In this video, we'll be going over a currency hedging problem, which is very common for the CPA as well as many other finance exams. In this problem, we have Wonder Company, which has entered into three forward exchange contracts to buy 100,000 euros in 90 days. They provide you with some spot and forward exchange rates, and they tell you that the second forward contract is to hedge a commitment to purchase equipment being manufactured for Wonder. And the question is, at December 31st, 2021, what amount of net foreign currency transaction gain should Wonder include in income from this forward contract? So we have Wonder Company, which has locked in the price of euros at December 12th for 0 0.90 to be transacted at March 12th, 2022. Now let's take a look at a high level what this transaction is actually doing. Wonder Company will pay 0 0.90, which works out to $90,000 in exchange for the 100,000 euros. Now they lock this in at December 12th, so they remove the risk of paying a different amount based on foreign currency exchange rate fluctuations. They remove volatility. In exchange for the 100,000 euro, they will get the equipment that they need for their business from the seller. So we have step one, exchanging to get the euro that they need, and then step two, transacting for the equipment. Now this takes place at March 12th, so what's going on at December 31? Well, the forward exchange contract that they locked in will have changed in value by then. Instead of 0 0.90, they would have had to pay 0.93, which means they'd have to pay $3,000 more for that 100,000 euro if they locked in the forward exchange contract at December 31st instead of December 12th. So they have a $3,000 gain. So let's use this to solve our problem. The question is, at December 31st, what shows up on the income statement from this forward contract? Now, this can either be a cash flow or a fair value hedge. So let's assume that it qualifies as a fair value hedge. The purchase commitment has a loss of $3,000 at December 31st, which will show up on their income statement. The forward hedge will have a $3,000 gain, which will also, if it qualifies as a fair value hedge, show up on their income statement, netting us zero dollars on our income statement. So that's what will happen if it's a fair value hedge. Let's see what happens if it's a cash flow hedge. Again, we have our purchase commitment losing $3,000, but that's, that's going to show up in other comprehensive income, not on the income statement. And the same is true for the gain from our forward hedge. That's going to show up in OCI as well. So again, it's going to be a net zero for the income statements, which is the answer to our question. The amount of net foreign currency transaction gain will be zero in income from this forward contract. Now, let's take a look at a few things that make this problem difficult. First, they ask you about three forward contracts when the question is only about one. They're trying to distract you so that maybe you'll uh, multiply by three by mistake, or you'll think it's not a value, uh, valid hedge because there's two other forward contracts, none of which is true. We just have to focus on the one foreign exchange contract that they're asking about. They also provide you in the question with spot rates that we never use. The question is only about a forward and then the change in value of that forward. So we don't need those spot rates. Those are, again, to make you miscalculate and try to use those in the problem when you don't need to. And they also give you some information about the equipment being manufactured. Maybe they'll provide some details about that when any purchase commitment will do as far as meeting a cash flow or a fair value hedge. 
They will provide all kinds of other information to distract you and to cause you to make a mistake. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the problem again. We see that we don't need to know about the three forward exchange contracts. We're just asking about one. We, don't, we can ignore the spot exchange rates. And we don't have to get into all the details that they might provide you about the equipment being manufactured. We just focus on the December 31st value, not December 12th, not March 12th. Make sure that you look at the question carefully and answer exactly what they're asking you. Well, that's it for this example. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at john at passingscorefinance.com. And thanks for watching this video.